What's going on, guys? My name's Tori Kravitz, joined by my co-host, Alicia Toot. Welcome back to She's with the Band. Alicia, we have lots to catch up on. How are you? You look tan. Oh, my. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy that I was able to get to a tan level because my first day in Cuba, dude, I scorched. We we checked in around one o'clock and they didn't give us our rooms until four. So we kind of were walking around the hotel thinking, what do we do? And of course, there's the beautiful beach. So all of us decide to go down to the beach. And next thing you know, we're like, oh, no, we're feeling a little hot. Like, what's going on? You should lose track of time. And we didn't have the sunscreen on yet because it was in our bags that we had to check at the the front desk. It was a whole thing. So I was absolutely burnt to a crisp the first day. And I thought, I'm not going to be able to redeem myself. And luckily, over the first couple of days, once I had that base burn turn into a tan, I was able to uh, develop this. So I'm very happy you noticed. Thank you for mentioning it. I'm clearly happy and proud about it. (laughs) I think this is a sign you need to spend more time in Florida. You need more sun exposure on a regular basis because I don't I burn. Truly do. And I think it's just because I'm constantly like, I mean, even if I just go out to the grocery store, it's beaming down on me at all times. So I think I'm just used to it. So And every time me. I'm, I, you know, I gladly would because every time I'm down there, I'm always saying to you, it's so hot. I can't stand this. <laughs> but if it's going to help on future tropical vacations and I get to see you more, I'm all in. <laughs> there we go. We got to spin it that way. This is productive. Like you're actually just conditioning yourself. It's training. And that's why you go on vacation to Florida. That, that's that's the reason. No other reasoning <laughs> at all. How are you? What's new? I know that you've been crazy busy. Yeah, no, everything's been good. I mean, I just moved to a new apartment. It looks exactly the same to you all watching this. Um, but it's nice to have a little change of pace. Um, and just, you know, listening to lots of music as I always do. I've been working a lot on PR stuff and there's so much good music out there at all times. So that's just where my head has been. Um, but yeah, not too much to report to be honest. Okay. I mean, I didn't go to Cuba like you, so. (laughs) It's so weird though, because Cuba, we had so much fun. It was a great group of people. I went with my childhood best friend. It was like 25 years of friendship we were celebrating, which is just madness in itself. And I can't wait for us to get there. We're going to, we're going to be just, oh, it's going to be glorious. But while we were down there, we just ran into so many issues with the hotel itself. And one of the rooms didn't have air conditioning for the first three days for, for a pair. And it is hot there and then our room did this thing five times tour five times where you would leave the room and then from the outside you could just walk right in like it wouldn't (laughs) lock so we are in some foreign country with all our valuables trying to fit all this stuff into this tiny little safe thinking how the hell are we going to be safe throughout the night so we had to call maintenance so many times and by the end of it they just knew who we were they just weren't surprised anymore (laughs) it was really sad you made some new friends. How about that? You made friends with the we maintenance guys. Did. It was it was rough, but the beaches are beautiful. I got to snorkel for the first time. I don't know if you've been snorkeling before, but it mm-hmm. was just, it was magical just being one with all the fish. It was crazy. And then uh, we went to this freshwater cave too, where we just felt like mermaids and that was awesome. So I'm happy. Oh, I'm in a good amazing. mood. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I'd be in a great mood too if I'd just done all that. Sheesh, I yeah. can get out more. <laughs> Dude, it's wild. Um, But yeah, today's also such a big interview. So I think that has really been on my mind today where I'm just so excited. We're chatting with Christina from Lacuna Coil. Um, I mean, you want to talk about legacy acts who have really paved the way for women in metal. I mean, this is it right here. And also you all listening have been requesting this interview literally since the jump of this podcast starting. So, you know, we hear your comments, we see your comments and we do our best. We really do. It took a while because she's not in the United States. So it took us yes. a minute to schedule, but it was it was worth the persistence, right? I'm I'm so excited we have her today. I've had her on my show a couple of times, and she's just so sweet and open. And I think what we're really going to connect to her on, not only because we're fans of her music for such a long time, but also the fact that she is a self-coined nerd and she owns it in so many different avenues. And you know how you and I can get down and be in super nerdy, dude. And I think the fact that it's just three chicks that people wouldn't expect to have these qualities, whether the fact that you look at us and we love heavy metal or that we love like video games or comics or whatever it might be I can't wait to just get on with her even more about that she's crushing it in the gaming world as well as in the music industry so total badass I can't wait I know I feel like there's so much to unpack when I was thinking about like the the biggest milestones of her career or what what do you ask about and it's like how do we narrow this down <laughs> to just keep it, yeah. this interview to an hour or less so we're gonna do our best to ask all the burning questions and just have Ooh. a good conversation so should we get to it let's rock and roll tour
Christina, welcome to the show. How's your day been? We are so excited to have you on right now. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, I'm super excited. Thank you so much for having. Of course, I love what the you- setup you have going on behind you. What what is all of this behind you? Is it a bunch of collectibles? What's happening? Oh, behind me, it's basically part of my world because obviously 50% of my world is made by music, but other 50% is made by other a million um, passions and hobbies. And I love video games. So there is a lot of stuff related to video games here and the nerd world <laughs> that I'm crazy about. So, and, and most of all, chaos, p- pure chaos. I love that. I mean, that's the thing I know Alicia and I were just talking about before you came on, how much we both are nerds too. So we really resonate with the fact that you have so many different interests. I mean, how did you first start dappling in all these different worlds and and finding your way in, in that sphere? Well, I it goes way back in the past because, I mean, I was a little girl and I was already, you know, playing as much as I could with my uh, with my friends. I was the last one of uh, of a big family of, of four kids. So we didn't really have a lot of games. But I had this um, friend of mine who was, uh, you know, an only kid, super spoiled. So I would go at his place uh, trying all the new consoles and table games and all action figures. And I fell in love with this world um, later on. I got, you know, my first Game Boys, Nintendos, and uh, and then the pl- first PlayStation. But then I remember that I stopped for a little while because I was going on tour. So I didn't really have a lot of time because I was moving very much around the world. And thanks to the pandemic, I went back to to my, you know, to my love because I could spend more time. Obviously, it's quote cool because, I mean trying to find you know the good thing out of it all (laughs) what I think is cool is how in the past you've really discussed how it can resonate strange to a lot of people like being a woman in metal but also having these very nerdy qualities which is something we've gone through too because to the naked eye people might look at us and think there's no way that they know this much about comic books or video games or or metal music Uh, but I know how much you love the creativity and the vibe and the energy that this world brings and you were kind of talking there about some of those first consoles that you had but was there a comic book or a game or an action figure or even a franchise in specific that made you just fall in love with this nerdy crazy world Ooh, well the very very first game I've ever played I think as far as I can remember um it's called Pitfall it was on okay. uh, the console was an Atari 2600 so it goes a couple of years back <laughs> Uh, but and that is the first game I remember that I fell in love with. Uh, but like recently, I could say Final Fantasy VII, okay. uh, the Resident Evil saga, the Silent Hill saga. It depends because I have a different tastes. I mean, the the <laughs> the last game that I fell in love with. It's it's kind of funny to say, but it's basically a simulator of a power wash. <laughs> I, I need to know more. <laughs> yeah, no, we have basically, to elaborate now. <laughs> basically, you're cleaning houses and cars and bikes. I mean, that's the, it's just a game in which you just like shut off your mind and you just like do do things, whatever. You're free, no pressure. Well, different kind of pressure, water it's pressure, right. water but pressure. no stress, no stress, it's- no competition. I mean, sometimes those type of games are are amazing because a lot of people think that in order to play games, you have to be a pro, which is completely far from reality because there are few pros that are super competitive with other people. There are a lot of people that are just interested in just like playing to have a good time, to to get better, to improve yourself, to to challenge yourself and not the rest of the world. It's so I funny really you mentioned like- that. I can't even judge you for playing the Power Wash game because I, I recently started playing Merge Mansion, which is kind of the same thing. You're just I like know that. I know that bushes as well. and like cleaning up a dirty mansion. And it sounds so bad on paper, but you're right. It's so relaxing. I get it. I, was gonna say I tell you more. I tell you more. And this is really funny. Uh, I'm I'm very active on social media because I, I, I'm, I'm a people person. So I, I post stories and, and, and stuff. Like I tried a real power wash thing and I posted a story of me cleaning so you wouldn't even see me I was just like literally like okay I'm having a good time now it got it got the most views I've ever had 
ever. Uh, what? <laughs> if I was posting a picture of myself naked, it wouldn't have so many stories. So, so many views. So it's, it's, it's super, I think it's super cool. Like, wow. It is super <laughs> is cool it. because it's like people actually loving something that's not just an aesthetic or a view or like a really beautiful picture that you post. It's just something goofy and off the cuff. And yes. I love how Tor brought up that game that she was playing too, because for me, my equivalent to that power washing game is one called mowing and throwing, where you literally just sit on a lawnmower and you just mow the lawn and it's the most Perfect. therapeutic chill thing gotta ever. have that like, yes <laughs> gotta have it it's like my little time to just have therapy and meditate and not think about the world and you just you just mow the lawn it's great <laughs> i can imagine all this group of guys that are just like women you know those yeah. are games it's like where's my halo women. yeah thank you <laughs> yeah well you know what we're gamers too so we have cred in our own ways and our lawns look great yeah they do exactly <laughs> You know, what I think is interesting too, is like the video gaming world that you, you love outside of music is now fully intertwined with your music career. I mean, it having is. music involved in metal health singer and Zombicide, which you recently announced. I mean, it's happening. Yeah. Um, it is so, happening. I mean, what is that like for you to see those worlds combined? Because it makes so much sense considering how epic Lacuna Coil's music is. It's made for this. Yeah, it's crazy because, I mean, we've been seeing this all along. There are so many soundtracks of video games that are metal, but the new generation do don't even know that it's metal. So sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with like 25 or 20 people years old and I'm like, 20 years old people, and I'm like, this is metal. The soundtrack that you are actually liking, this <laughs> is metal. And they're like, oh. Oh, I didn't even know. So they had no idea. So it's not something new. It's something that it's been going on, especially on games that are, you know, action games in which you really have to move your hands and, and weapons. So uh, it's nothing uh, new. I already experienced uh, the songwriting for, for video games because I, I also wrote a song for Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is basically the remake of, of the iconic game uh, Diablo 2. And was already amazing because, as you said, my my two favorite words are colliding in once. But in the last month, I I came out with two new things, and one is the song for uh, Hell Singer, which is great because actually I met the crew of Hell Singer last year at Gamescom in Germany, which is you know a, a huge convention of uh, video games and and nerd stuff. Which makes it even cooler because we met at a nerd convention and everything, you know, became became real. And that was fantastic to do. I love the song. I love when when I can experiment with my voice singing something that I didn't write, you know, to just to just to see a different point of view and to try something different. Um and the zombie side song was supposed to be an instrumental, but then we we decided to write a full song. And not just a trailer for, for the presentation of of the new the new game uh, Why Death, and uh, and it came out uh, as a Lacuna, a new Lacuna Coil song, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> I can't wait to, to reveal it fully because <laughs> no time yet. And we're gonna be miniatures as well, so that completes. That's so cool. Yeah, if you get the so Kickstarter, cool. uh, which is still going on, and you get the game. This will be the only chance to get us five as miniatures that you play with in the game. Yes. Now, being such a big fan of it, do you kind of go back and play these games while listening to your song? Because I feel like although it could be viewed as what egotistical or whatever it might be, like I would be doing it. I'd literally well, want to play the game. I have another cool story <laughs> because Lacuna Coil had... Um, songs in other games and one of them is called uh, rock star okay. rock band sorry no rock star rock band so I we had to a play our truth in that game yeah. so much <laughs> so so you could sing you could actually sing our truth and i tried i remember we tried with we, we did a we made a little party in the states we've been invited to and i tried singing it and i mean i wrote my parts i sung my parts <laughs> nice. that's the original version i got 80 percent and I was like, huh. And a guy, like, the same evening sent me a video of himself, like, you know, trolling me because he got 100%. And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Because <laughs> that was wow. awkward, so but amazing. That that makes it good. 
I've, I've got to tell you something like uh, Tor knows this, but I, as a teenager, would play rock band competitively. We had a whole band and we'd get 100% mm. on every single song. And every time that we would play your song, I was on vocals and bass. And it was so hard hitting those notes perfectly because you have <laughs> such an incredible range. But I'll never forget the one time I did get 100% and I felt like the most joy I've felt in a very long time. So it's really full circle even just to have you on this show, yet alone <laughs> you bring up such a big part of my childhood which your so track cool. was literally a part of so I that you know, is I'd super cool to I, hear I didn't get to nerd out with you uh, about that about that moment right now <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well, I guess this is this is proof that you can't use rock band to validate your musical expertise or abilities because I mean that's, yeah, because that's you have to story. sing it like very mechanically because right. there are no fluctuations allowed you have to be very mechanic for i don't know the game to hear the notes so if you go ah, it doesn't catch it you have to go like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it's like okay i don't sing like that i'm sorry <laughs> but i wrote it you did <laughs> you still get the credit where it's due and where it matters <laughs> Um, and so, I mean, you've done so much in the video game world already, but are there any video games where you're like, the day we get our song or our music in this game, I've made it. This is the dream. Yeah, but it's 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 the ultimate dream, but it will never happen because it will be a Final Fantasy one. And obviously the music is completely different. And I mean, there is, I don't know, there there is a completely different uh, process behind but uh, recently I've seen a concert in Milano related to the music of Final Fantasy. And there was actually a guy that sounded almost rockish for one okay. of their new songs. So maybe, who knows? Square Enix. Hi. Speaking of existence, here. shall we? <laughs> maybe. But I would love to continue this because, I mean, I, as we said, when, when your passions collide in once, there was always something good coming out of it. Fully. I, I know something else we wanted to talk about that really just shows the extent of success that you've had with Lacuna Coils. The fact that last year did mark 20 years since the release of Kama Lies. Um, and you did a whole re-release and, you know, I was re-listening to it again this morning, just kind of getting myself in the headspace for this interview when I was like, wow, it really shows the evolution of you all as musicians mm -hmm. and your continued creativity that you've been able to reinvent these songs and make them so new and so modern. And yet they still sound like the songs we know and love. So I was really thinking too about what it must have been like to revisit them after 20 years. And I don't know about you, but for me, like music is such a time capsule that when I hear a song from many, many years ago, I put myself kind of in that place of when I first heard it or when it first happened. And I could see how, I don't know if maybe that unlocked some new memories for you or just made you reflect, but did you have any of those kind of aha moments as you were really digging into those again? Not really memories, but I have to admit that it was really stressful because we were touching holy grounds. I mean, Coma Lies has yeah. been the record that kind of made us make the, the next step. So remaking songs that are in the memories and in the you know in the heart of so many fans was very risky uh, but we wanted to celebrate this record not just to just to make a simple remastering and we wanted to see try to be as pure as possible like let's try to see how we would have write comma lies if it was today and uh, maybe it was more stressful for Maki, our bass player, because, I mean, he's the main composer of the music and the music really made it all because the vocal lines are pretty much the same. We resung everything, but the, 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 the vocals are pretty much the same. So the hardest work was uh, for him as a songwriter and a, and a producer. But um, we actually wrote it with a new outlook instead of like looking back. Mm -hmm. Um we just looked at the present, where we were, what we liked, taking uh, advantage of the knowledge we have, the technology we have, you know, new microphones, uh, studios. Back then it was an analogic, so it, it's completely new nowadays. It's, it's faster, it's shorter, but uh, we wanted to give a lot of attention to the songwriting. And I have to say that I'm very, very happy. You know, I never even considered like the technology differences. Right. That, yeah. that is 
Because in my mind, when I thought of reworking an album, it's almost one of those things where you think, oh, 20 years ago, for all we know, there could have been like one little piece of a song that maybe bothered you years later, or you thought of something incredible or a different lyric or something you can readjust. So I thought of it in a, a stance of, okay, it's like a reimagination of it with all of the stuff you've gone through and learned. But yeah, the technology part is something that never- The technology never... is the main thing. I mean, it was expensive yeah. to call Germany. I remember that we had bills that were insane just to do interviews, you know, with the rest of Europe. It was surreal. Uh, wow. It was- very 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 expensive there were no smartphones there, there was no internet so it was completely different yeah Holy, great. Holy. what was the biggest challenge then when you first put that record together in comparison to how i'm assuming breezy it must have been this time around <laughs> from a tech aspect not necessarily the creative aspect from the tech aspect is that we were basically recording it as i said in analogic so like big rolls of tape that were limited. I mean, you could only re if you didn't like it, you couldn't, let's say, choose from different takes. Now you can take uh, 20 takes of a, of a vocal part and pick up the one that you like the most. Mm -hmm. Back then it was just like, okay, one take, uh, oh, I don't like it. I have to redo everything from the very beginning. And maybe there was something else that you didn't like, and then you had to do it again and the mixing was different the sound was different um the 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 simple technology of like cables and uh, microphones were different so the sound would be different uh so many things so many things and we had we also had um less time back then uh because maybe you had i don't know a couple of weeks to, to do the old record which is always stressful because if you're not in shape, if you're sick, if you're tired, obviously, as a singer, it has a strong impact because it's a physical instrument. This so now it's kind of like, okay, I can record it in more time. So if I'm tired, I can come in a couple of days, I can rest my voice and wow. record it forever. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, this is such an interesting topic, actually, because I know there's a bit of a debate now that, you know, with so much technology, things like auto-tune as well, that just about anybody could be a musician. Mm -hmm. So do you think having this kind of technology is a blessing or a curse when it comes to the music industry? Like raw and, and talent are almost. Now? I yeah, want to like, believe that if there is a good songwriting behind, and I'm not necessarily talking about like you have to be the most perfect musician, the most skilled one. I'm talking about sensations uh, and feelings that you can get through your music. Uh, I think it's a, it's a help. Uh, I think that there are, you know, many good songwriters around, you know, in the new generations, good bands coming out. There is surely a lot of garbage uh, a lot of people that think that they can be musicians just because they write a song in two minutes at home and and put it on in, on internet and they kind of suck, but it can happen. I mean, I take it I take it as a blessing. Um, I want to be positive. I respect your like optimism. <laughs> Same here. I'm a, yeah, I'm an optimist. Optimism <laughs> while keeping it real and pointing out that there is some garbage, which I, I adore. <laughs> There is also a natural selection because if you really, really suck yeah. and nobody will end up listening to you. So you have to have something worthy. And if you, if you suck and people listen to you, maybe you're not that terrible. Maybe it's all opinion, there is it's someone all that relates to your music. I mean, who am I to say who's the best musician on earth? Fair play. Well, one of the things that I really wanted to dive into with you is just how outspoken you have been about equality, because on this show, even with the title, She's With The Band, we just love focusing on empowering other people. And we know a lot of our viewers are females who are taking away a lot from these conversations and having guests like you on the show. And you had spoke on the fact that as women in such a male dominated world and industry, we're often just judged solely on our looks. People could literally be drooling over you just standing there in leather pants but that doesn't add up to any of the potential that you have or mm. it doesn't even correlate to that in a sense so mm. how did you first cope with being treated differently just being based judged solely on your looks and not necessarily that talent that you were bringing to the table mm, I remember like when I started it would happen that you know I got a lot of looks just because a lot of people were surprised to see a woman on stage um, 
I got, you know, some people like maybe screaming stupid stuff at the very beginning. Uh, but it didn't discourage me because I think the problem is not mine. The problem is in whoever just sees, uh, you know, a woman that is in the wrong place for them. I mean, it's not my problem because at the end of the day, I'm still here, you know, 20 plus years into my career and who knows where they are. I don't really mind. Um, what I always say is that it's a question of balance because it is true that women are more judged judged on their look. Um, they have more attention if they are pretty. Uh, they are more judged if they put an extra kilo on and nobody cares. You know, if there is a singer that maybe it's a little bit, you know, extra that has a little bit of extra weight, according to the fact that what's the extra weight? That's another <laughs> can of worm that <laughs> that we would have to open. Uh, I always say that it's a question of balance because it is also true that women can also take, you know, a little bit of advantage out of this because having more attention because you're a woman, it's a plus. So we can deny that there is good and bad. But in the end of it all, I think that it's it's in people's who, who, who thinks in the wrong way, the problem, not not really, you know, in being a woman in a metal world or or stuff like that. Luckily, I know a lot of guys that are just fully supporting the female scene. They, they they get behind the look that they can say like, wow, yeah, you're pretty. This girl is pretty. But man, she can sing. Man, she can play. Yes. If, yeah, if you're I, just like an empty box that looks great, I don't think you're going to go that far. That an interesting far. point that you essentially just haven't given the energy to the comments that are not focusing on your talents and your abilities. So, I mean, I know that's something that we talk about quite often on this podcast is how do we shift that focus and create more equality in the way that we're seen? So do you think just not giving energy to it might I be the best it's approach? About, I think it's about being uh, sure, more sure of yourself and your potential. I, I do not care if I post a picture in which I'm a little bit more sexy or, you know, uh, I'm showing some legs and because I don't mind. I mean, it's it's not my problem. I can wear whatever I want. You want to judge me for this? You think that I'm less good of a singer because of this? It's not my problem because I make record. I play around the world. People are happy about my singing. I don't care. <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> I love just it. Like whatever, yes. whatever. I'm sure you're not, you know, Mr. Universe. <laughs> fucking cares. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, at least Life I've got short. We've gotten all kinds of comments, uh, you know, being on, I mean, different pr profession, but, you know, similar feedback as well. And it's, it's been the same for us is just having to let it roll off your back and keep rolling, keep going. That's Doesn't exactly matter. it. You know what you bring to the table, you know, the raw talent that you have yeah. and the fact that we have people supporting us in these crazy journeys in itself is the only kind of validation. There's no point in focusing on all the bullshit and the negativity anymore. It used to really get to us when we we both first started because we were yeah. in our in our teens. Um, and now it just got to the point where you realize we are loving what we get to do. This is our living. And I know you probably relate to that sense very much. We've <laughs> been doing this 20 plus years, thriving through it. So it's very, very cool to see and be able to relate on, on that matter of just not caring anymore. It's very yeah, it's liberating. Just like, and what can you do? I mean, I, 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 that's what we, we, that's what we must do, you know, being strong women, determined and, uh, and sure of ourselves. So that's the only thing we can technically do. Uh, and not not the only thing, but in terms of like self esteem, and uh, we don't have to to listen to too many comments or or let anybody else degrading us because because of who we are. Totally. And I think this mindset has also been quite reflective, even as as this podcast has evolved over time. As the conversations used to be quite heavily on this topic, and then it became let's just show what all these amazing women are doing with their careers. Let's talk about their talent and their achievements because that in itself speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. So I do love that sentiment. And so when you think back to all the crowning achievements of your career, what do you want to be known and remembered for as like the <laughs> legacy of Lacuna Coil? Because I was saying to Alicia prior to this interview, I'm like, I don't even know where to begin on that front. <laughs> You've <laughs> done so much. many cool things <laughs> over the years. It's crazy. Uh, well, may, the, the first thing I think I can think of is 
that um, you you have an opportunity. I don't want to say you can do everything you want because I'm pretty sure that each one of us was born for something specific. There are some things that you'll, you're never going to be able to do. I mean, if I wanted to be a runway model, I will never be able to because I, my body's not made this way. Uh, there are There is other people that was born for that. But I was born for being a singer. I was born for, you know, being a gamer, what, whatever I was born for. So I don't want to say that you can do everything, but you can, you have a lot of potential on what you're capable of. So I want to be remembered like she worked on what she was good at and she made history somehow. I can do the same thing in my world. Uh, I want people to get um, to get more fierce because of that. To have more to have more self esteem and 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 personal uh, not passion. I don't know. I, I cannot find the term. Uh, I want whoever follows me to be to be more sure of themselves because it's so easy, especially for the new generations, to get lost into the nothing. You know, with social medias and making comparisons with everybody. Uh, looking at this filter world, they they completely lost it because they don't know who they are, who they want to be, who they want to, how they want to look like. So I I would love to be a sort of a I don't want to sound pretentious, but a sort of a guide towards the real world as well. That it's still out there, and there are still so many things to do out there. <laughs> being being real somehow <laughs> and not to believe everything that's on internet and 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 what you see that it's not reality it's not reality um the other thing that i would like to be remembered uh at uh is um is the fact that you can easily be you know you can you can different show you can you can show different parts of your character easily. Sometimes I think about myself, you know, you could see like very elegant and sexy pictures of me and you could see me as a tomboy, you know, without makeup, like dressed as a person that doesn't even have a house and wanders around the city and and it works. It's okay. It's okay. You can have different different sides of you and they're all good as long as they're you. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it makes any sense. It, it makes, makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia and I, I think, are both really hit by what you just said because I know that yeah. we've had our own personal conversations about those exact principles and really resonating with those same experiences. I mean, especially what you said about social media, it's so easy to get pulled in so many different directions or believe that you need to be like the person on your feed. But what a great example that you just got to find what's true to you and run with it. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I have fun with social medias as well. And I understand that, I mean, you are posting something that will stay there. So I totally understand. I mean, I'm the same. Maybe I take 10 pictures and I pick up the best one. I'm not going to put the shittiest one but because I use it as a sort of a diary. But to be sucked into the vortex of like, I'm not good enough because these people have more than I have or it's more beautiful or whatever it it's still filtered i mean a lot of people are not happy behind you know that happiness that they show so you should not lose it i mean you're gonna go through ups and downs in life and that's absolutely normal there is no yeah. life no perfect life it would be so fucking boring Hugely. it would be boring because through the sadness be you enjoy even more the joyous times you yeah. realize that it makes sense. Yeah, the duality. The pendulum swings. Sometimes it's real low, but you know that just means it's going to come right back up. And oh, something yeah. Something beautiful is going to happen. And you're right. It does make you cherish those more positive moments more because you had to go through some crazy shit in order to get yeah. there. So very relatable. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So one thing that I want to bring up, just getting out of that mindset, is you had kind of mentioned the elegance and going to the tomboy aspects, which, again, very relatable. We have our days where we just lounge in pajamas all day and then the days where we just want to get glam and wear glitter. And I have loved seeing how over the years your creativity has gotten wild since being in the band from the beginning, not only 
obviously with the music, but especially when it comes to your aesthetics and your makeup, mm -hmm. because you've really been pushing the envelope on what is considered the norm with the extravagant eyeliner, the pops mm -hmm. of red, the bold eye designs. So how mm -hmm. much fun has that been for you just having this newfound love and focus? Because I've noticed even in some of the photo shoots you're doing, the clothes will be provided by someone else. You have a photographer different, that's different, but you're the one doing your hair, you're doing your makeup. So tell us yeah. more about that and that world for you. Yeah, it's fun. It's another outlet for creativity. Uh, honestly, I I like to keep the makeup pretty much the same because I think it works on my face. And it's always weird that the very few times that I have a, like a makeup artist coming in and do something because I look in the mirror, I'm like, who's this person? <laughs> uh, so I always go for the panda look, you know, a lot of black around the eye. Uh, some Lately, I've, I've been falling in love with eyeliner because I like to do, you know, some graphic designs. And I always loved like black and red. Uh, so I I always play with with these colors. But uh, for example, the stage outfits are always decided by all of us. We like to keep an aesthetic that it's a band aesthetic and not just like a mine, uh, which is kind of typical sometimes, you know, when you are in a band with other guys, it's just like the woman has to be different than the guys are looking the same. I wanted to be one of them. Uh, I want to I want to be like them, uh, maybe slightly more feminine, but it doesn't really matter. Like lately, we all wore the same the same um, jumpsuits and it was just fine. It was just fine. I mean, I don't need to go up there and, and be the pretty girl anymore. I mean, I was just like, whatever, I, I did it. Now I do whatever is comfortable for me, uh, whatever works with the band aesthetic but we always take care of it we wanted to have sense with the with every record that we do because it goes together it's the theatrical aspect that in my opinion is needed on a, on a live show because whoever is paying a ticket to see you wants to see you not just to hear you so obviously you have to play well you have to sing well but but you are also performing and in order to be a good performer i think that you need the proper outfit i would i could never go on stage with i don't know with a sport t-shirt and a jumpers and just like hey i just just came from outside i'm talking for me i mean i'm not judging anyone else but yeah. it it also works to to switch your mode your mind into into the show you know, it's a sort of a preparation, the makeup, the hair. Uh, I mean, the hair is not working very well because in five seconds, mine are just like <laughs> for the <Same>. humidity. <laughs> but <laughs> look at what's going on already. I just <laughs> when we started. <laughs> yeah. And I always say that if my makeup is not fucked up at the end of the gig, that means that I didn't have a lot of fun. You didn't rock <laughs> there out it hard is. enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always going somewhere else that on I can't my, lie. On my, but you definitely inspired and... the the black eyes lately. So <laughs> I, I like to think that you've inspired a lot of people to take on the smoky eye, you know? <laughs> Love the smoky eyes. Love it. Absolutely. And something I did want to ask you to uh, switch gears a little bit is uh, there's speculation about a new Lacuna Coil album in late 2023. I know nothing's been confirmed yet, yeah. but I thought of this too, as we were talking about Kamalize, how you were really looking to the present and in the future mm -hmm. of when you were working on that. So are you kind of in that mindset now too, where it's like, let's see what the future holds. We're moving forward. Yeah, we're definitely in the mindset. We we are already writing music, uh, but I think it's going to be 2024 because okay. the problem is like, it's not really the music that we write, but now in order to deliver a record, it takes a lot more time, especially uh, the pandemic delayed everything. Uh, and uh, metal music, it's, maybe the only genre in which the physical supports are still very important because there are a lot of collectors, a lot of fans really want to keep the copy of a record in their hands. And it takes time to, to print vinyls, to print CDs. Um, you need sometimes, you know, one year in between the delivering of the master and the release of the record, because you have to set up a lot of things. That's why I'm talking about 2024. Maybe we will record an album in 2023, but 
probably will be delivered in 2024 but we are definitely writing new music that i can that's what matters to me there will be new music (laughs) you mentioned the uh the track that you were working on earlier that we will be able to hear the whole thing soon so at least we're getting something and that makes us happy (laughs) yeah 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 and in the states in the upcoming tour that we'll have in may we might play the new song maybe maybe i didn't Hmm. see anything (laughs) <laughs> that's quite a subtle hint I wonder what that could mean <laughs> but I didn't say anything <laughs> oh. <laughs> well now we're at the part in the show Christina where we love going into the jaw-dropping segment where we ask questions in almost like a speed round kind of fashion uh just with moments in your career that really did make your jaw drop so for the first one what would you say is the most jaw-dropping experience you have ever had at a show and this could be a lacuna coil show or a show that you attended as a fan well i would say it are you talking about the show or even what's behind you know like strange encounters strange encounters anything I, i'm we're here for it all i Fair would say game. strange encounters but it's this this answer is made by two things because um it's when we it's when nicolas cage came behind the stage to compliment our show that was kind of surreal and the second was was the second one was when norman reedus came complimenting me and that was just like i was putting makeup on i was getting ready to go to sing on stage with megadeth um at uh, i think it was the um, golden gods awards in new york and um the tour manager of antrax is like hey cree there is a friend of mine who wants to say hi and i was just like yeah let him in and i was putting makeup on and norman reedus shows i'm like oh okay. my god so those two moments were kind of like ah. <laughs> pretty wow. crazy I mean, our jaws literally dropped. So I yeah. think those stories just did what they were supposed to do. Complimenting on the music, which is the coolest thing. It's not that we met because they mm-hmm. were part of the same show, but they were doing something completely different. They were there and they listened to the music. It's like, wow. Wow. So I must say, I, I love knowing that Nicolas Cage is a metalhead. That makes yes. me really happy. But, well, it, it, it's because his son isn't a metal band. I don't know if it's still anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. probably how he got in touch with metal music. That's cool. That is very cool. Yeah. And the next one we have here is most jaw dropping misstep early in your career and the lesson that you learned from it. The 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 sorry? Like the, a misstep, like a like a mistake or a mishap, something where you learned something valuable in your career. Uh, well, I, I think that like the first contract you sign is always a is always a mistake. And this is something that you learn along the way because you learn, you know, how the business works. Uh, you learn how to talk with lawyers, so maybe the next <laughs> contracts you sign are are um, are better. This this could be one, and then in life, many many lessons. You know, with uh, with people that you meet and trust in that, you know, rethinking. It's probably like, eh, maybe maybe I shouldn't have. You know, it happens to everybody. But the contract one, I think, it's a good one. The contract yeah, actually, one's like, yeah. go, no, ahead, sorry, go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say, I literally just started reading a book right now. That's just, it's it's one of those big overviews about how the music industry works. And it's written by a music lawyer. Mm. And the first thing he says is how artists, um, they have the artistic mind, but sometimes either know a lot about the business, but don't want to be a part of it. Or they just literally want nothing to do with it because you're so in the space of making music and the creativity. Yes. But man, what an important part of the industry to really think about if you're gonna really start a business out of your music yeah yeah yeah. lawyers are helpful oh yeah (laughs) just a little bit (laughs) yeah yeah well for the next one who is the most jaw-dropping female artist that you'd absolutely love to work with in the future Ooh, oh so many because i mean i i already know so many amazing singers uh, and colleagues, you know, from Floor, Jansen, uh, Lisa Wiglas, Simone Simmons. And there are many, 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 many. Um, we were talking with uh, with Alyssa to do something together one day. Uh, I don't know, man. There are so many. Ha, oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> Britney Spears. Yes. Now we're talking. Go. Oh, me, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Alyssa would be great too, you know, mm. but I really like the thought of a, a Brittany Lacuna Coil mashup. 
I would that it is. would be cool to do something like completely different, you know, like I don't yeah. know, Taylor Swift or Britney Spears. But Britney Spears, I don't know, seems to be more fun. Everybody thinks that she's absolutely nuts, but I just I, I like her. Me too. Like good <laughs> I like her. And we already know the genre crossover thing works after your Depeche Mode cover. We know it can happen and it works yeah. well. That's true. Totally. Who's to say? Totally. Or I don't know, Cindy Loper. Uh, there are so many, so many that I can think of. It's it's hard to say just one. Of course. Well, this is a great start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andy Lennox. The... Ooh. Mm. Eh. We could stay here for a while. <laughs> and I can see the I can see the Annie Lennox one working really well because with not only solo stuff for her but a rhythmics, like there was a lot of cool industrial stuff going on there. So that mm. could forge its way to metal in a very cool way. Yeah. So just just saying that, that could be very <laughs> neat too. <laughs> we're already plotting for you, is what we're saying. Yeah. We're already we're That's already what figuring we're saying. this out. <laughs> want, this is this is now selfish. Now I just want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and our last jaw dropping for you is the most jaw dropping misconception about you that you wish people understood. Mm. Hmm. Well, in the past, probably people thought that I was more like keeping more of a distance in between me and the fans uh, because there was no internet. So you could only see the pictures and uh, the pictures were really, you know, very static, very fierce, very... Uh, so maybe the misconception was that um, that I was not funny or that you could not talk to me. Uh, but other misconceptions? Hmm. No, nah, I don't think there are because, I mean, I, I was always really, really open in everything. Yeah, I don't think that there are misconceptions about me. And even if that one people think it still stands from watching all of your interviews from watching you on stage, the reels that you post where you're power washing, clearly <laughs> you are very approachable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way to bring it full circle. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. All back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, there, there, might, yeah. there must be something. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, in the beginning, a lot of people didn't think that we were Italians. So this could be one. I oh. mean, someone still thinks that we're from New York. When we say we're Italians, they're like, oh, are you guys from New Jersey? I'm like, no, no, no. We come like, from Italy. Italy. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A waitress asked us like, oh, did you guys drive here? Like, no, there was an ocean oh. in between. But, you know, maybe one day in the future. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> Well, it'd be quite an impressive guys then, you know, considering you speak fluent Italian, like <laughs> you look the part, you speak the part. So now, now that we know for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Christina, for your time. You're I mean, this has probably been one of my favorite conversations welcome. of the podcast. Thank Me you too. so much. I feel like we learned a lot about you too. So this has been great. Thank yeah. you so much. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Again, sorry for the little delay. Oh, no. No worries. You're allowed to be fashionably late. You of all people <laughs> yeah. will allow. <laughs> I'm never. I'm always like there like five, ten minutes in prior. I'm never, never late. So it feels so bad. <laughs> no, you are here. That's what matters to us. And we really appreciate your time, how open you were, and just getting to know more about you, the band, everything going on. You're you're lovely. I know it that. My I pleasure, for sure. Thank you. And of <laughs> course, to everybody who is tuning in, don't forget to follow us on socials at Tori and Alicia. And you can tune into new episodes of She's With The Band as they air every single Monday on NotFest.com. Don't forget as well, something cool that's been helping us out is rating us online. We're on Spotify, Apple, and you can tune in on YouTube. Again, on behalf of my co-host Tori Kravitz, I have been Alicia Atute, and we will see you next week right here on She's With The Band. Bye, everybody. <laughs>